Hi, I'm Dan, and welcome to my vlog, which will be discussing a topic that I'm very passionate about, which is the 1989 Hillsborough disaster, and what its enduring impact was on the confidence in policing, is public confidence in policing. The Stafford Police Commissioner regards public confidence to be about trust and having a police service that is open and transparent, where policing at every level can be examined and scrutinised to help improve reassurance and the service to communities. Ultimately, public confidence condenses a range of complex and interrelated judgments that concern public trust in the police. Loder and McCarthy, 2003, suggest that social alignment found between the community and law enforcement is established upon public views of the ability of the police to act as civic guardians, who secure public respect and embody community values. Jackson and Sunshine, 2007, suggests that public confidence ultimately is based not only in the way the police deal with crime, but also by officers being there for victims, treating people fairly, providing a visible and accessible source of moral authority. Public confidence is considered a paramount performance figure for the police. Enhancing the public confidence in policing is essential as it encourages active civic engagement which is important as the public are a key source of information. By demonstrating the trustworthiness to the public, the police can strengthen their social connection with citizens. According to Hugh 2007, the criminal justice system relies on motivation towards cooperation and support. Newburn 2017 emphasises that public confidence is the key ingredient of effective community policing, which remains the key form of policing even today. Furthermore, the alternative to this method of policing is via deterrence, which according to Huo and Tyler in 2002 is a far less efficient and safe model of policing. A lack of public confidence restricts the abilities of the police to use stop and search effectively, causing far more scrutiny of institutional racism, police culture and police, police use of force, which came under huge scrutiny after the death of Jean-Charles de Menez. Historically, Public confidence is particularly important in England and Wales, with policing by consent being the bedrock of the British policing model. The speech in 2020 shares one of Sir Robert Peel's nine principles of law enforcement to be to maintain at all times a relationship with the public that gives reality to the historic tradition that the police are the public and the public are the police. The police being only members of the public who are paid to give full-time attention to duties which are incumbent on every citizen in the interests of community welfare and existence. On April 15, 1989, over 50,000 people attended Hillsborough Stadium to relieve the bottleneck of Liverpool fans entering the stadium. The police opened it to Gate 3. Consequently, over 3,000 fans funneled into the Standing Park Stadium, which had a maximum capacity of just 1,600. South Yorkshire Police Supervisor David Duckerfield was in charge of the public safety at the event, being promoted to match commander just weeks before the game, meaning he was unfamiliar with Hillsborough Stadium. BBC covered Duffield's testimony, which conceded at his retirement he was probably not the best man for the job. Police and Duffield initially concluded the crush was an attempt by rowdy fans launching a pitch invasion. The media, including the Sun, followed suit with stories of hooligan scousers beating up police attempting to perform CPR on victims of the crush, despite the reality being the opposite. Duffield crucially later admitted this was a lie. September 12, 2012, there was an independent panel released a report stating that the police orchestrated a cover-up, falsified documents and blamed innocent supporters. The lives of 41 fans could have also been saved if emergency services acted accordingly, and it cleared supporters of any wrongdoing or blame for the disaster. On October 12, 2012, senior police officers and officials in charge of Hillsborough Football Stadium would be facing trials for manslaughter. The Director of Public Prosecutions announced they are discovering new evidence uncovered by a report to support charges indicating the authorities' chaotic response led to 41 unnecessary lives being lost. The victims of the tragedy included 96 deaths, 10 victims being under the age of 16, and further 766 injuries. Hillsborough is the highest death toll in British sporting history. So what is the enduring impact on the confidence of policing? The Hillsborough disaster represented the erosion of public confidence in policing with the BBC documenting David Cameron's speech that admitted the victims' families endured a 27-year search for justice, which has just been met with obfuscation and hostility instead of sympathy and answers. Bill Scrayton highlights how instances of abuse of state power, such as Hillsborough, hugely undermine public confidence in the administration of judicial control, producing crises of popular confidence and the impartiality of legal state apparatuses. Initially, the damage to police confidence was confined locally to Merseyside, However, the findings of Hillsborough Independent Panel confirm that the police do not only make mistakes, 
but they also successfully cover up these mistakes. Through black propaganda campaigns which involved altering statements given by junior officers to conceal any evidence of any police failings, and instead emphasised victim responsibility. Grishkova highlights that via the post-mortem examination of the deceased which measured the level of alcohol in blood, regardless of the victim's age. This included the children who died. Consequently, this has shown the extent of what reigned in 2002 labels cop culture, in which there is an extreme reluctance to prosecute one of their own, despite the fatalities of 96 innocent fans they were assigned to protect. This led to the nation no longer viewing the police from body community values, which as I discussed is an essential part of people's public confidence in the police. Ultimately then, Liverpool no longer saw the police as normal members of the public. This view was enhanced by the perceived politicising of the police. The Sun acted as the leading media source reiterating the cover-up story, demonising fans, drunk hooligans, with headlines stating some even urinated on brave cops and pickpocketed victims. Owned by Rupert Murdoch, an avid supporter of Thatcher's right-wing politics, waging war on the working class and defending the police at Hillsborough. Due to Thatcher's and the Sun's response to Hillsborough, alongside the police's violent destruction of the mining strikes, which was orchestrated by Thatcher, the police received a reputation of being a, a political tool of Thatcher's regime tarnishing their historic reputation of being apolitical. This additionally damaged people's confidence in the police to serve the public and act as their civic guardians. Ultimately, with the other controversies since the Hillsborough disaster and before the Hillsborough disaster having highlighted further corruption and the lack of accountability by the police, such as the murder of Stephen Lawrence, the national mining strikes and Clubgate Row, it is impossible to conclude the exact extent of the enduring damage that Hillsborough did on the confidence in policing. However, due to the scale of the scandal of Hillsborough, it will certainly always result in a shadow of doubt being in the minds of the public and having trust and confidence in the police again. Despite methods to restore the public's confidence, including the forcing of body cams and boxes and the vast amount of inquiries to fix the issue, the longevity of the publicity of the victims' families, 25-year fight for truth and accountability, has stained an entire generation of minds and consequently caused a shadow of doubt to follow the police. This graph shows the extent of the enduring attitudes around Hillsborough within Merseyside. Although this graph indicates how attitudes around the Sun newspaper have not changed, with it still being banned in most shops today, the trend is very likely to be representative of attitudes around confidence and policing in Merseyside as well. Peter Smith was working as a personnel manager in Merseyside at the time of the disaster, and is a former trade union official. His first hand account of the scandal conveys a similar message and the enduring impact of Hillsborough on police. Watching the Liverpool Knotts Forest game at Hillsborough on the television and saw the chaotic scenes evolve on the pitch, there did not appear to be a big police presence and knowing no coordination of the emergency services. The after effects of this situation were really felt hard on Merseyside. They lost their trust in the police because of the cover-ups that were going on and the fact that there were more in, the police were more interested in looking after their own rather than getting to the root cause of the problems. And this distrust lasted for many years. In fact, even after the Hillsborough inquiry, the Merseyside people do not trust the police. In conclusion, initially the impact of Hillsborough disaster on the confidence in policing was limited locally to the public of Merseyside, who were directly impacted by the tragedy. However, after years of media coverage and lawsuits, the 2012 Hillsborough Independent Panel report exacerbated the impact, the scandal being exposed and becoming a major story concerning co corruption within the UK police. Overall then, Hillsborough has caused a permanent shadow over the police, stripping them of their apolitical and honest reputation, and instead has destroyed the bridges the police built to communities. Despite attempts to rebuild these bridges of confidence, the shadow of doubt surrounding the police's trustworthiness due to Hillsborough Gander will still be in doubt for generations. Thank you for watching. I hope you feel this vlog has developed your understanding of the Hillsborough tragedy and its enduring impacts on confidence in policing.